Hello guys, Aloy Andalus from MBFX and Effective Technical Directors, and today we will present 3ds Max 2020. Uh, it's not an official presentation, but it's my presentation, so I will cover a little what's new. I did a video with what changed from 2019 to 2020, basically this year of new releases. We had uh, this point updates. We had a particle loader, we had improvements in OSL, we have active shade in viewport, we have an, a lot of performance improvements. We will cover on this video what changed from the last update, 2019.3, that was three months ago, to 2020. So we will not cover all the year news, because I have videos covering that. We will cover only the last three months. The biggest improvement has been on performance, but you will see overall a 20% improvement. They include validity intervals, that's speeding up rig evaluation, basically 3ds Max pre-evaluates your scene, checking where there is change on your animation, so then on the second pass can be way faster. There is mesh conversion optimizations, a skin and a skin grab optimization, so it will be way faster. Speed ups with selections with a lot of groups in the scene, and it's things that you will see while you are working on, but we had as well the other improvements is in OSL and on chamfers, and we will see this right now. One of the big improvements in 2020 is the chamfer modifier has been totally rewritten. There is, it's totally new modifier basically. And for this, thanks a lot to Fausto De Martini that gave me this model. It's done with Provolean. So we will check what we have on chamfer. Let's turn it on. You have different presets that you can save and you can load. Creates by default as you can see a nice chamfer, as you will expect. But the cool thing is that we have much more options right now. We have the quad chamfer, before by default was the three chamfer. We will see, uh, let's focus in one part of this, the triangular chamfer, the quad creates a quad output. Let's focus on this part here that is kind of like bad because the chamfer is very big. You can increase and decrease the amount of the chamfer, chamfer, obviously. You can limit the effect and you will avoid this part. The limit effect, it tries to constrain. It has some limits, obviously. Uh, let's do something nice. The tension at one is a square, so it will create a totally hard edge chamfer right here. 0.5 is approximately 0.55 is a round chamfer and then we can go to the uniform uniform allows for negative depth as you can see here it goes inside and can create some nice chamfer types let's see it creates interesting results but a normal chamfer will be at 0.55 approx for a round, round chamfer, and the most interesting there is that on uniform we have different types of amounts. Right now it's fixed, meaning that it will be always 0.2, but we can go to legacy and we can go to by crease weight. By crease weight means that we can define weights based on the edit poly modifier. Here I define a weight of 0.2. Let's do it quite obvious. This one will be a weight of 1. Uh, 0.2 and let's add here a 0... a 0.5. We don't need any more to create multiple chamfers with multiple edit poly selections. You will see that this is bigger, it's 1. Let's increase it, the max amount here, it's, let's go to 0.5. We have bigger chamfers, here it's a smaller chamfer, and a smaller chamfer here, that is 0.2. And if we would like to go here, for example, at 0, we just need to go select all this edge there, and let's go on the crease, on the weight at 0.05, so it will be super small. Not the weight, but the crease, 0. 5. So now you can see we have big chamfers, smaller chamfers, super small chamfers, and you can 
pain like that with your edit poly. Uh, pretty cool, I think. You have the option as well to create insets with the same chamfer modifier. So simply go to inset, it will create an inset on all selected elements. As well the selection, right now we have all edges, but you can define if you want to use the stack modifier, the selected edges, all edges, uh, based on face selection, you have a lot of options there. Different options for smoothing, material IDs, apply only on a specific angles, so it will not be applied everywhere, only if the angle is uh, bigger than that or by, by maximum angle. And then you have different outputs, uh, you can as well say open edge, so you will not have the chamfers visible, you will get something like that. Or you can invert the selection, so you will only get the you will get only the chamfer, and you can create quite cool effects with that alone as well. Now that we have this, I will show you a small tutorial here. Uh, so we have this chamfer based on crease weights that is dynamic, so you can define it manually with Edit Poly. But since we have data channels, we can create that procedurally. Uh, basically, I have a node influence where I select this node. Let's enable that. Uh, we convert this to edge selection and on edge output we define that we want to use this information here for crease weights. You can randomize it, you can do all, all type of stuff here. But basically now we have this cool effect where we can reveal objects. You can create chamfers as well with that based on an object or a forming object and you will get this cool stuff. One of the improvements is Make Preview. Make Preview is way faster now. And they fix a lot of things. So the image size before it was based on your monitor or windows. So you was not able to go higher than your actual resolution of your viewport. Now it's dependent of the render resolution. You can go 200 times bigger. So two times bigger than your render resolution. Or you can go uh, half size. Then there is overrides like before, and you can overlay different stuff. You can over overlay frame numbers, the camera view, and here I have a snippet. Basically, it's max script. I add to load the FOB of your camera, so it will be dynamic. If your FOB is animated, you will see it. Output they fix ABI files or MOB files. Normally, I do JPEG sequence. Uh, but now with mob in some users was creating problems and errors now it's working fine and it's way faster so you will see that on all my tests it's like three to four times faster than before to create a preview jpeg it's even faster and you can see here that you have on the overlay the fob and the frame number uh, very good update Basically, being like two or three times faster for me, it's awesome because I do a lot of previews. We had a lot of improvements during 2019 to 2020 about OSL. Every point release there has been new maps, new improvements. But on 2020, we have even maybe the biggest jam on OSL. Uh, 3ds Max is switching from the legacy maps to OSL. It adds a lot of new features to 3ds Max, so it's good that you start checking it out. One of the new maps is Color Key. Color Key basically gives us uh, a color key. It's uh, obvious. So basically, you uh, select a green space and you can get the key to use it on a cutout map. So basically, I have this without with the key. It generates the transparency map. And we can tweak it there. One thing that you will realize is that we have here the viewport accuracy. Right now, 3ds Max in 2020 converts any OSL to HSLS in real time on the viewport. This means that it's way faster than before. It's like uh, 30 times faster depending on the maps. But to do so, this only works on realistic mode. That this doesn't mean realistic on the viewport. That can be confusing. Means realistic mode on your material. So if it's as show a normal map, this right now it's baking the map to display something, but it's not accurate and can be slower with OSL. When we use the realistic, we have a real-time conversion and 
this is saying us how accurate is this conversion. Right now it's 100%, means that what we see on the viewport is what we will render. And with all the OSL maps in 3 ds Max shipped in, you will have a 100% accuracy most of the time. Um, but the cool thing of OSL is that you can create your own OSL. You can inspect the code, you can change it, you can download uh, new OSL maps and change it yourself. So sometimes this conversion will not be totally 100%, but you will see it here. So now that we are on realistic mode, you will have like real-time feedback. And I think that having this, the color key adds a lot of possibilities, but we have much, much more. In tw 2020, we have all these and even more. There is a little of everything. We have simple tiles. You can change for architects. This will be pretty good because you can create all types of configurations for your maps. The cool thing of OSL is that, for example, every single of these uh, tiles can be... You can offset by UVs, you can offset the material that goes there, you can rotate it procedurally, is the principal benefit of, of OSL. And we have a lot of things, like we have three tone, basically to change colors and match it with something else. We have half tone, this creates a 2D look to your objects and can be based on illumination. We have matcaps, we have different random index, we have simple gradient, color tweaks, change uh, color spaces from HSV to RGB, or you have different from Antu. And we have things like normal OSL that basically reads the normals of your object and you can transform with whatever it is. And yeah, OSL is growing a lot in 3 ds Max and it gives a lot of possibilities that we didn't have before. If you want to learn more, I suggest you, and this will be explained better by Sab Anderson, I am pretty sure that we'll create a new video for OSL in 2020, and you will be able to see it on Autodesk 3 ds Max Learning Channel. There is already a lot of material for OSL and it's totally worth it. So this has been some of the news on 3 ds Max 2020. I hope that you guys like it. Let me know in the comments what do you think. I suggest you, if you have ideas, if you have concerns, go to 3 ds Studio Max Ideas on the feedback page. You can add here your idea, people can vote it, and developers check this a lot more than you think. Can give you a glimpse of what will come. If you go to top voted ideas, we have Bioport tier off, I would love that. It's accepted. Multi threading of core modifiers, future consideration, ability to escape. Yeah, guys, if you like the video, subscribe or like. I hope that present you with more new stuff in 3ds Max. I am pretty excited. Last two years, I think that the development of 3ds Max has been accelerating, and I think it's great. I hope to see much more things and that I will be able to share it with you. See you guys.